guys so Hello. welcome back once more today i'm with a very special guest that i'm gonna let him introduce himself okay <laughs> all right hi guys and um my name is elijah parisa um from nigeria i left nigeria in 2013 to morocco for okay. scholar on the scholarship for government scholarship um study okay and uh studied in uh, I studied water environmental engineering in Morocco there. I studied a master's, but I kind of left. That's his career on its own. So I left <laughs> it and I came okay. to, to Germany um, to do another master's. Okay. Uh, before before you go on, uh, right. so about your bachelor's, you did your bachelor's in Morocco. Yes. What's the name of the university? Okay, the university's name is um, Université Hassan II. Okay. That's Hassan. Second, Hassan. University. Second as a university will okay. translate in English, right? Okay. How yeah. did you hear about the university and what attracted you to Morocco? Okay, um first I had just finished my high school, right? I just finished high school I finished high school in twenty twelve. So um applied for university with in Nigeria. Yeah, I did the post GME and so on. Okay. So the admission did come. Okay. And but I was also, you know, I had already applied to uh, there was also ND. I wanted to be a naval officer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I, I had applied to NDA. I mean, thank God, like, I wasn't just focusing on one direction, right? That's right. The university. So yeah. I had applied to NDA. I got it. I went to the, the, I was selected for the training. Okay. Selection, uh, training. I went. My name came out of the final list, but on the awaiting right. list. Right. So okay. I was on the awaiting list. I think the the first on the awaiting list actually. Okay. So uh, it was meaning that if somebody was to leave, I was I was the next. You'd be the one. next one to go. But yeah, and I had the scholarship also. I had also applied for the scholarship. The I one went, in Morocco. Yeah. Okay. So I went to write the exams, entrance exams as well, and um, mm. yeah. Okay, but tell me, how did you hear about that level. scholarship in Morocco? Who told you, oh, okay, you okay. about it? It was actually a friend okay. in, in church. A friend told me about it. He had also applied for it, mm -hmm. and he got it. And uh, but one thing led to another. He wasn't able to go. Okay. He was to go to Tunisia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it very common that Nigerians get scholarship to study in North Africa? Would yes. So that? this scholarship is not just in for African countries. It's okay. All over the world. So uh, the federal government scholarship is a bilateral scholarship so between nigeria and other countries between right? nigeria and other countries yes. including morocco for example yeah including morocco there's russia there's Serbia, there's hungary i mean different okay. countries in the world mm -hmm. uh that nigeria has a uh, bilateral relationship with what does that mean exactly so this this means two countries have coming to agree okay. that we're going to exchange ideas and you know experiences okay and um education is one of it right so, so does it mean that some people come from the other country to nigeria and then nigerians go to the other country yes that's how it's supposed to be but okay. i don't i don't really know if others go back uh, yeah to mm. nigeria to to i i don't know that's the meaning of it. i don't know if it's very common for i mean i've seen a couple of foreigners studying in my university back then yeah so probably they were also on that kind of scholarship but I don't know if it's very common that Niger the Nigerian government is offering scholarship to people from other countries. Do you I, think I so? believe, yeah. yeah. Uh, I've also seen some other people from other countries study in Nigeria. Okay. Um, I think, yeah, just online, just watching some videos and okay. so on. Yeah. So cool. it's a two way thing. Yeah. Nigerians yeah. go to the country and then they send also. Yes, that's interesting. Nigeria, I mean, yeah. This is a whole topic for another day because it's like how much funding is <laughs> available for that to give to other people and then how much how much are they giving up to the people there because yeah. you know going to the university in nigeria is such a big problem mm -hmm. you know you finish mm -hmm. your high school and then you apply to one million universities the jam and then you're not getting anything you know so yeah. i'm just thinking if they are offering scholarship to people from other countries like how much are they giving to their people yeah but this is a story for another day anyway right right yeah, um so. so how did you apply was it like a straight 
forward process online you fill in the application details and then boom just done or how you mean the scholarship or? yeah the scholarship in morocco okay the scholarship that that was first of all we had to submit our documents okay is it like the requirements mm-hmm. you have to meet in terms of your your high school certificate right okay i can't re- remember all like the actual requirements now mm-hmm. but you have to make uh, have some setting uh great okay. distinctions okay. in your final uh high school certificate mm-hmm. living certificate so um after the screening of the results then they select those who have been qualified okay. Okay. after submitting your your, your documents mm-hmm. and after that you go right on the exams where in nigeria or in morocco in the same nigeria okay they they, they select so they place you in different um geo, geopolitical zones. Okay. So they are, yeah, is divided into the six geopolitical zones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So they place you in one center to go and write. Mm-hmm. Center that is close to you. Yeah. I mean, the transport and so on. So. Okay. Um. So I remember mine. I went to write mine in uh, Kwara State. Okay. Was it Kwara State? Also? Yeah. Yeah. And how was the exam like? Was it something like that post UTME? Or oh, is it in that nature? I'm talking of like um yeah, it was combination of uh like there was quantitative reasoning, general knowledge, general knowledge. So what is general knowledge? General knowledge basically like uh they ask you things about uh the world, like things that have happened in the world, inventions, um Yo, who reputable exactly things like that, reputable people, okay. personalities in the world. Okay. And yeah, you remember if you remember quantitative reasoning and verbal reasoning mm-hmm. in primary yeah, schools, yeah. things like that. They okay. give you reasoning uh, stuff uh, to fix, okay. just to check your faculty out and yeah, stuff, stuff like with. that. Yeah, and okay. cool. some other questions from English, mathematics, and okay. yeah, okay. general. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then you you study there. How how many years did you study there? Three or four years. The the education the system there is. Like here in Germany, it's three years right? for bachelor's, okay. three years in bachelor's. So I started then after that, I started the master's. As then, I said before, I started master, but I left. Why did you leave? You didn't like it? Yeah, because I wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't going my way. So okay. and, yeah, a lot of complications. So okay. I had to just leave it and okay. I came over here. Yeah, so that's. Uh, before we switch to Germany, you studied in French? Yeah. Yeah, so that means you're good in French. <laughs> I'll say, yeah, to exactly I mean, like that. Why are you not saying it with confidence? <laughs> if you study in French, then you're good in French. I mean, he's wanting to study in the language, I want him to speak it, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I can I can speak to a certain extent. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay, I mean, this will be a story for another day. Yeah. But the main point for me here is how you, you moved from Morocco to, to Germany. Mm-hmm. You know? So, how was the process like? Okay, he, he came myself. Germany was first of all. Germany wasn't in my list at first. So always was, the case for most people. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was. I was looking at UK. I was looking at the US. Okay, US wasn't really, but UK majorly. Okay. I got admission in the UK, but the money was yeah too much. Money, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the money was too much, and um, so I applied to Poland. I remember Poland. I got admission there, but they were, they were also asking for like an installment payment and stuff okay. like in installment before you could get like um I think a letter to apply for visa or something like that. Okay. So Germany, Germany now came later on. Uh, okay, I had a, I had a friend here who, mm-hmm. who also moved to Germany. Okay. To do his masters. Okay. So he kind of he, he was also of help to me. He gave me some link. I remember he sent like. The dad link, okay. dad or de link, yeah, to where you can find courses. Uh, courses and universities and so on. Yeah. So I kind of you know through that and also my personal research, mm-hmm. doing mm-hmm. research myself, the mm-hmm. schools and everything, the courses I want to want, want to study. Okay. And yeah. So after that, I I chose the schools. I I kind of applied to a lot of schools. I think six to eight also. Okay. And um yeah, uh through uni assist most of them were true universities okay not all of them yeah mm-hmm. um just i think just few universities that you have to apply directly yeah, yeah, yeah. Apply most of them go to universities yeah they are mostly through okay. universities the way i am now okay uh i you know i was accepted okay thankfully and then yeah, yeah. I, cool I 
and the visa i think this is the most important part the visa how you applied for the visa from morocco to germany how did it go okay uh, the, the visa process uh okay after i got the admission right mm -hmm. and then i think it, it came around june of 2019 okay so after that i immediately then applied for my visa mm -hmm. you know for an appointment and so on yeah so after that it took a while i was it was back and forth i was going to the embassy back and forth to just make sure everything is all okay, okay. and mm -hmm. then i got a reply in from the german embassy from the german embassy in morocco, in morocco right okay yeah, german embassy in morocco yeah. um so i had to translate first of all i had to translate my documents to english right yeah because my studies was in english and they speak french yeah but, mm -hmm. yeah so after that the reply for an appointment came in august mm -hmm. yeah okay. in august it came in august so they give me a date um i think it was in october, october. or so okay mm -hmm. yeah and yeah give me a date in october i went i just wanted to submit my documents so there was no question you know they went they ask you questions and no stuff. Mm not really like verbally they just yeah. gave me a form yeah it was a form okay. i filled with christians and then i filled it yeah so there wasn't like face to face verbal interaction, interaction like okay. interview mm -hmm. so i i was actually so su surprised because i was you prepared, prepared for, for interview, right? I was, yeah i was prepared yeah. for a physical like a yeah. face to face interview mm -hmm. this is That's quite interesting surprising. because if you would apply from nigeria it's like you have to really really prepare them mm -hmm. they screw you you know they ask you questions like if it were a job interview but it's funny from other countries it's not the same you know i've had friends also apply from other countries and mm -hmm. literally you just go and submit the yeah. application form and right. then you wait to check the details if you meet all the requirements then it's done mm -hmm. you just get your visa either you can pick it or they post it to you right mm -hmm. and so i think the point here guys is um if you're watching this video and you want to study in germany and you're from maybe yeah, any country at all i think the point is you don't have to go back to your home country yeah. to apply you know for your student visa you can apply to the german embassy in that country where you are right you know right so i think that's a really good point i've had many people testify to this and mm -hmm. i think it's, it's nice to know but this does not necessarily apply to other kind of visas i mean again it, i think it depends on which status you hold in that country Hopefully. because i've i've met people who they are on tourist visa mm -hmm. to another country, for example, Vietnam, just to yeah. name one country. And then they got admission to study in Germany. And then they want to apply From to there. the German embassy. But because they were on tourist visa, I think they had they requested them to go to their home country. Mm -hmm. yeah, because I guess tourist visa is just a temporary visa, you know? Three months also, I think. Yeah, but if you were like studying in Morocco, you already had a, a regular like residency. Uh, yeah, really and then you just your resident there you yeah know, so it kind of makes sense yeah. yeah just to add to that like um i remember i also went to uh because when i uh, like applied for the appointment to get a uh, visa appointment right okay. interview mm -hmm. it kind of was speaking time right so yeah. i remember from june to august so, so yeah i was thinking to come very fast so i went to the nigerian party in morocco to kind of ask if they could you know help yeah. they told me like no man, I'm supposed to go back to Nigeria. You can imagine this guy, but why would I say? <laughs> I don't understand why this kind of misinformation. You know, so, it's like, and this is what I always tell people: like, hey, um, the kind of service you get, you know, or the the acceptance or rejections that you get, usually always depends on who you meet in that office. Exactly, yeah. You know, yeah. because now they told you you have to go to Nigeria. Yeah. You know, but that was not the case. You finally really applied exactly. directly and it went through. Yeah. And then you ask yourself, okay, are there like rules for these things? From my experience and those of people that I know, they are not like standard rules, really. Just what you want, try your best, you know, and yeah, then yeah. see what happens, you know, because yeah, also like here, yeah, if you want to extend your residence permit, sometimes you get one year, sometimes you get two, sometimes you get three. God knows <laughs> what rule they are following, exactly. you know. Yeah. Um, before we wrap it up, so now you're in Germany. What are yeah. you currently studying? Okay, um, studying environmental and resource management okay. at the Brandenburg University of Technology, Cottbus. Yeah. Okay. Would you give us just a short overview of the course content? Okay, um, basically the course content, it ranges, is interdisciplinary. Okay. Um, 
so engineering science and management part mm -hmm. of it so depending on where you want to you know focus on yeah um so there there there's a mandatory course that you have to take it's mm -hmm. called erm2 okay for everybody and mm -hmm. um you can then choose you, you have um the right to choose five courses from other departments that okay. you want maximum of five from other departments so it's mm -hmm. flexible okay. and the other ones are they are um compulsory elective so okay. meaning that it's in the environmental resource management curriculum like scope mm -hmm. but you still have the choice to choose which one you want okay. to choose cool. from from it yeah cool. So well guys, if you're interested in this course, then watch the next video coming up soon. Right. But anyways, thank you very much for tuning in. Yeah. And thank you, Elijah.